Your power is that any insect that gets within 30 feet of you is vaporized. One day on your regular walk to work, a man steps in your field and is turned to dust in the middle of the street. People start fleeing in a panic, except for a few standing about 30 feet away, staring at you hatefully. Before I could think, a blacked-out navigator screeched up to me, and I was bundled inside. Preliminary scans indicate you're human. What tech did you use to vaporize that carapacai, and where did you get it from? Three men in black suits sat around me, their sidearms pointing at my face. I don't even know what you're talking about. Bugs have always gotten burned up when they got too close to me, but never a person. Are you guys FBI? The man sitting beside me reached over to grip the back of my neck as his two companions glanced toward each other. You're a mutate. Is he registered? I hadn't noticed when they had taken my wallet, but the man sitting across from me handed my ID to the man who had been doing all the speaking. Listen, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know how I killed that man. Can somebody please tell me what is going on? My neck was gripped tighter as I spoke. It wasn't a man, Mr. Anders. It was a Karapakai. You may have just started a war with the Martians. I could only blink as a response. Martians. Return to HQ. The rest of that swarm is sure to report back as soon as possible. The higher-ups need to be made aware of Mr. Anders and his capabilities. They are going to be in an uproar when scans show the Martian ship leaving the atmosphere. I began to shake. I had been snatched up by some shadow organization, and it was clear they did not plan to just let me go. Mr. Anders, you are about to become part of something the likes of which you've never imagined. The pressure on my neck was instantly alleviated, as gravity seemed to disappear from the SUV. I was briefly amazed as I thought the vehicle could fly. Reality came crashing down when the SUV slammed into the ground on its side. We are being engaged. Send help. I repeat, we are being engaged. I was in a tangled heap of agents and the taste of iron filled my mouth. The SUV was slammed onto its roof before I could even think enough to extricate myself. I can't believe they are just attacking us like this. It seems our intelligence about the Karapakai was just plain ru- The van was sent flying one more time, slamming into a building before hitting the ground. The door had been torn from its hinges, and we were dumped onto the concrete outside. A ship, for lack of a better term, hovered above us, black as night with smooth armor. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. Find cover, you idiot. One of the agents grabbed my arm to pull me behind the overturned SUV, but a ball of plasma blasted us into the center of the road, below the ship. The once audible hum of whatever the ship used to fly cut to silence. The rough grip of the agent desperately pulled at my arm. Move, damn you. I was disoriented and in pain, but I rolled in the direction the agent yanked me. I couldn't imagine escaping a ship like the one above us, but I knew I was not ready to die. One of the other agents grabbed my arm and pulled me. I screamed as overwhelming pain flashed through my left leg. Whiteness briefly filled my vision before soothing black carried me into unconsciousness. The crew was vaporized, the same as the scout on the road. The ship crashed with no one flying it. My entire body was racked in pain as I opened my eyes to a sterile white room. Who would have thought first contact would have been initiated by some random mutate? We have been watching each other for how many months now? Two men stood at the end of the bed I was laying on. One of the agents that had abducted me, and a short, balding man in a white suit. Why would they be here if they weren't hostile, Agent Smith? I have said that from the beginning. We are fortunate to have access to a completely undamaged ship. It may even the odds. My leg was gone. Tubes were down my throat, in my wrist, and in my urethra. I could barely groan. Ah, Mr. Anders, welcome to the land of the living. We nearly lost all of you there. The man in white chuckled, amused at his black humor. Welcome to Space Force, Mr. Anders. I am, frankly, quite surprised that I haven't heard of you before two weeks ago. 
A mutate of your threat level rarely stays hidden as long as you have. I couldn't speak. That was the least discomforting part of being intubated. I am certain you must be quite afraid, and perhaps a tad overwhelmed, but rest assured, you have become the single most important being alive for Earth. Your ability to kill any insect within proximity to you makes you the ultimate warrior in a fight with a race such as the Karapakai. We need you, Mr. Anders, or humanity may soon face extinction. This story was written by Dead Poetic Twelve. Read by Bag of Thank you for listening.